Hello and welcome to today's Cambridge University Press ELT webinar. I'm Jenny McLeod Collins and I'll be moderating today's session along with my colleagues Stuart Vinney and Ellie Benstead. During the webinar you'll be able to hear our speaker Monty Watkin and to see her slides but you won't be able to see Monty herself. You won't need a microphone. If you want to ask a question, please use the questions box, which you should be able to see in your control panel on the right of your screen. And I know many of you have found this already because um, we've seen hellos from all over the world. Um, in order, if you haven't found it yet, um, click on the small arrow to the left of the word questions in order to write and view questions. And you can make this box larger by clicking on the small box with an arrow to the top right of this box. The recording of today's webinar will be on our blog and on YouTube next week. We'll email you a copy of your attendance certificate next week. So I'm very pleased to welcome Monsi as this afternoon's presenter. Monsi Watkin has over 25 years of English teaching experience in a wide range of international contexts teaching English to children, materials writing, and providing professional development to teachers. She has worked for the British Council, both in Spain as part of the Bilingual Education Project and abroad in international schools and for NGOs. During the last 15 years, she has authored ELT and science course books for major international publishers. She is one of the co-authors of the Cambridge Fun Skill series. So, over to you, Monty. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jenny. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to, uh, to the webinar, Sounds Fun, Looks Right. I hope you're well and taking care of yourself, <laughs> yourselves in these difficult circumstances that are affecting our planet at the moment. Um, yeah, my name is Monty, and I have up till recently been living in Egypt. Uh, right by the Nile, in fact, with my cat, my husband. But right now, I'm speaking to you from the north of Spain. Can you see these letters on the screen right now? Can you remember any information I've just given you? Have you been paying attention already? You don't have to type anything, but just have a little think. So my name's Motsi. Up until recently, I was living in Egypt. I have uh, with my cat and now I'm in Spain. Have I missed out any information? Maybe you just like to practice like typing some things into the question box right now. What did I miss out on this slide? Oh, I don't think many people, sorry. Let me see, I'm just getting used to reading the, yes, exactly. Yeah, that I've lived with my husband, great, good, and I was living right by the Nile as well. So I just want to show you with this that it's, it's quite easy to integrate a simple starter uh, to get your students engaged or get them paying attention from the beginning. And I'd like you to remember this motto throughout this webinar. Little and often when we practice some of the things that we're going to look at today in today's session. Sometimes learning vocabulary, learning a new language, is a bit like this. Looking up at the starry sky at night, you see lots of shiny spots. And you're not sure if they are in formations or if they're connected, if there are any patterns there. And it can all look very confusing. So we need to make sense of that confusion. But right now, what I'd like you to do is to imagine you're looking up at the stars at night and you see a shooting star or an exploding supernova, what sound would you make? Have a think. You can just make it to yourself. You don't have to type in the box. Maybe you'd say this. Wow. And maybe that would be a different sound from going to the dentist. Just say a sound you might say at the dentist. Yeah, it might be, oh, or it might be, ow. And imagine you were going down a magical slide from the moon to the earth. What sound would you make as you whiz down that slide? Whee! And that would be a very different sound from walking across ice, wouldn't it? Very thin ice. Oh, oh, oh. 
And if you're hungry and you put suddenly a hot potato in your mouth, you might make this sound. Oh, 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 oh. And you can't see me right now, but I'm wearing very exquisite and very expensive diamond earrings. And you might, if you saw me, say, ooh. And then if I want a little bit of silence, I can put my finger to my mouth and say, shh. Musicians tune their instruments, don't they? And singers go up and down the scales before they perform. And so we too, with our students at the beginning of the class, could exercise our mouth muscles and our sound muscles. We can, we can um, practice making funny faces as we say, wow, oh, really exaggerating our mouths. Ooh, and then we can mix them up and put them all together. Wow, we, shoo, oh, 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 ah. And on paper, if we looked at these sounds, they'd look a little bit different, wouldn't they? Take a look, have a little read. Mm, lots of different spellings there for those sounds. And then we have sh, and we can see at the beginning of the word, the end of the word, and in the middle, attention. So the English language, as we can see, and as we probably all know, is a tricky one. Many letters are rebels. They don't like to conform to having the same sound. Cough, plow, dough. And many sounds don't like having the same letters. Time to write. So I feel it's a good idea for our young learners. Um, I think it's a, a good idea to draw our young learners' attention to these patterns to support their to support their learning of the English language and support their learning of vocabulary, but without overwhelming them. And as with everything in life, if we can understand what we're looking at. If you can see patterns in the constellations and make connections, we can learn to understand them and see the bigger picture. And so it is with sound patterns and spelling patterns. And I do apologize for the very underwhelming picture there, but um, I couldn't find a royalty-free Orion's belt or Big Dipper. <laughs> it's true that we already have a lot to teach. So in this webinar, we can make sound spelling awareness an easy, um, I'd like to look at how we can make sound spelling awareness an easy and effortless part of our lessons so that the sounds and their graphic patterns, how they're represented on paper, become familiar friends like Orion's Belt or the Big Dipper and our students are interacting with words and are engaged. So in this webinar we will look at what phonics is, how our course books are helping, and what we can do to support our learners and help them navigate through the universe of sounds and spellings to become confident readers and writers. So over to you just for a moment. What is phonics? What do you understand by phonics? Without writing a long paragraph, can you just summarise in a sentence or in a few words what you understand by it? What is it? Would you like to type in the box? Sounds, yes. Involves sounds. Sound of alphabets. Yeah, exactly what sounds. Is it A, B, C or A, B, C? Sounds made by letters, that's right, sound of a word. Exactly, sounds phonemes, or oh, vocabulary there, phonemes. Uh, good, phonics is about sounds. Exactly, thank you. So yeah, phonics is the teaching of sounds and how they are represented by the letters. And there are 26 letters in the alphabet and approximately 44 sounds that they represent. And students spend a lot of time moving through uh, learning the sounds and how to say them, how to read them, how to write them. British, American and bilingual schools follow programmes, phonics programmes, that provide a very clear and systematic approach to the teaching of phonics, to provide students with the tools for reading and writing. And that 
makes sense because children are learning their own language and they're able to apply their knowledge of sound and letter combinations. In other words, they're given the tools to read any word, whether they know it or not. And if they didn't follow these programs, learners would have to memorize whole words and there are over a half a million words in the English language. And so the success of, of learning them would depend on their ability to memorize. Can you imagine Im memorizing half a million words? rather than applying the knowledge of phonics to them. So I don't know if you're familiar with phonics programs then, by, um, it's, I can see by some of the, by your comments already, your com um, by some of your answers that you are, you would know some of the terminology here on the left. And maybe you'd just like to take a, a moment to look at the, the words on the left and see if you can match them with a the meaning or what they mean on the right. So, see if you were correct. A phoneme is the smallest unit of spoken language. So that's the a, o, a, t. A grapheme is any written letter on the page. A digraph is two vowels with one sound. So for example, the A in rain, the O in boat. A consonant digraph are two consonants with one sound. So for example, shh, yeah. you can't hear the individual consonants there. A split digraph is when we have a vowel, a consonant, and an E at the end. So otherwise known as the other, the magic E that you might be familiar with as well. So that a word like hop becomes hope, and a mat becomes your best mate. And then we have decode. Oh, sorry, then we have consonant clusters, I beg your pardon, two consonants blended together. So br, bl, sw, gr. And then decode is really just another word for read, as students are recognizing the letters and the sounds that they make. And write, uh, and encode is another word for write, interpreting the sounds as letters, putting them on and writing them on page. So phonics programs provide a very clear and um, and systematic approach. Students identifying sounds and recognizing what those sounds look like on paper, breaking words down, blending them, for ish, fish, and focusing on um, more and more complicated sound spelling patterns. So why don't we do these? Why don't we do these um, phonic programs in the teaching of our students, our EFL students? Well, first of all, students are learning their own language when they're moving through these programs. And secondly, they use a lot of vocabulary that is outside our young learners, um, our, what our young learners cover in their EFL course books. So in our EFL course books, we don't have so many examples to draw on that are, um, with the sound spelling um, combinations. And this would make it difficult to provide enough exposure and practice, but it's not impossible. For our students, I think it's important that if we work in our own context with the material that we have and with the examples that, um, as they appear in their units, and if we regroup vocabulary from different units, we can find different ways to, to different examples um, and different, sorry, different sound spelling patterns and examples and can highlight them. Native English learners take several years to master their own language. And I personally feel that sometimes course books throw our students into the deep end. We, they have seven or more new words to learn in each unit. Uh, to hear them, identify them, write them, spell them, make sense of them in, in, a, in a context while assimilating the new words from a previous unit they've just finished. And so what I feel is useful is to take some of the strategies from um, these phonics programs and help students interact more 
with words, uh, with the words that they are learning, the, the words that they are learning. So they can manage the sounds and spellings better and apply word knowledge to other words. So basically the same, the same objective, giving students the tools to help them master the English language. Of course, our learners will come to class with their own set of sounds and spelling rules from their own language, which they will apply to similar letter patterns in English. Or there may be patterns and sounds in English that don't even exist in their own language. So another job of ours is to be aware of these pot potential difficulties and make learners aware too to help them when they're reading, uh, when they're speaking and listening, reading and writing. And some of the difficulties we may already know or suspect. So for example, Egyptians, I think anybody from Egypt may agree with me, um, Egy Egyptian students might have problems with a b, b sound. And they also add an extra is on th endings, on th endings. So they'll say months instead of months. Oops. So what problems do your, what difficulties do your students have with their, um, when learning in, um, English and how do you deal, um, how do you deal with these difficulties? Would you like to just share some of your experiences in the box now? So what sounds do your students have difficulties with? And is there any, do you have any ideas of, of what you use in, or what you use in class to help them manage those, those difficulties in pronunciation or spelling? ED endings, yes. The sounds. Yes, vowels, yeah, B and P, yes. <laughs> the. Mm -hmm. So you do drilling and repetition, yes. Be good, the sounds. Good, oh, the schwa, yeah, the uh sound at the end of words. In particular, good, yeah. Great. Yeah, Spanish students have the, the, the yeah. Great, sound, very good. Very good. Great. In snow. Okay, so blends at the beginning. Good. So a lot of TH problems there. So yes, of course, we can show students how to make those sounds um, with their lips and their tongue and their teeth. But the put b some of you have mentioned as well we can um, put a piece of paper you know, have students hold a piece of paper in front of their mouths and practice uh, the, the paper should move when they do a p sound but it shouldn't flutter when they do a b sound and of course with the ed endings we can if the students are a little bit older teach the sort of rules about them but again practice looking at patterns very good Thank you. And I hope you don't mind, but can we just go, I just want to go back a slide because it's the first time I've given a webinar, I'm a little bit nervous and I did miss this out when I talked about taking techniques or strategies from, from uh, phonic programs. So for example, um, sounding words out or breaking words down, so tr, a, n, into sort of like manageable little, uh, um, into man manageable letters. Um, in swimming, there's a sound in swimming, there's an extra M that we don't hear when we say the word. So sometimes just making the student engage a little bit more with the word by either colouring those letters or putting dots under the extra letters um, can help it be, um, can, can make the spelling a little bit more memorable for children. Uh, difficult spellings like because, beautiful, um, we, can, um, we can get them to highlight the difficult um, vowel combinations in a word. And again, do activities where they're repeating uh, the, the, the writing of this word and the saying of this word. We can also break words down into words if we can notice words within words, arm, chair, bed, room. And we can also group words. So if we look across units, um, we can also 
group words um, by their similar sound and spelling correlation. So here, apple, circle, table, and this can help you um, make it a little bit more memorable. And if you can put it up on, on the wall or um, on a poster on your board, so to remind students, um, it will help their, their sort of future sound spelling correlation. Okay. So here, let's just summarise why phonics is important then. Would you like to just to individually have a little read through that and why we might want to, to do um, what, what I'm suggesting in taking some of the strategies and helping students manage those sounds and what they look like on paper. Okay, now I'd like to look at um, Now I'd like to look at how two course books are helping students manage words and sound spellings. And we, I will look at ideas around what you can see in the course books that you can adapt to your own setting and to your own material. Remember my motto at the beginning of the webinar, little and often. So the idea would be that you could take some ideas and if you don't have specific phonic pages in the course books you're using, but you can integrate these um, ideas into your classes at the beginning, in the middle or at the end. Um, but again, going back to that effortlessly, so it doesn't, so it wouldn't take too much trouble for you to do. But sometimes you will have to move outside your lexical set, um, for example, clothes, um, to, to do this. So let's first of all look at um, a page or um, a phonics section that's from Cambridge's kid, Kids Box. Um, there's a focus on phonics in, in each unit. And here you can see um, they have taken words from maybe different units, so maybe a, a unit on, on animals, a unit on colours, and they've focused on two specific spellings for the sound uh. So how can we exploit that a little bit and give practice and make it memorable for our students? Well, we could use flashcards. We could show them a snail that's slimy. It's not, doesn't look particularly slimy. And students might, you might be able to elicit the sound uh, from them. Of course, uh, that sort of repulsion might be a different, students might make a different sound in, your, um, in their language. And if my, if my son saw Brussels sprouts in a dish like this, he would definitely go, Ugh. So you can practice the er uh sound and again, use those kind of mouth muscles and exaggerate. Uh. And then we can go back to the activity itself where students can listen, say the words. You can hide the words and get them to, to write the words. And you can play a, a, a game with the sounds. Let's see, let me play a game with you. I want you just to listen. And I want you to blink every time you hear the er uh sound in the words I'm going to, um, uh, you're going to hear. Ready? Red, yellow, purple, party, girl, flowers, trousers, shirt, skirt, three, 13, chips, burger. Great. Okay, can you type? Let's see, again, if you're paying attention and if you're engaged, can you write down one word you heard from that list that's not on the page in front of you? With the er sound, of course. Shirt, yes. Burglar, oh, it was burger, actually, but yes, very similar, and it has the er sound in it, so very good. You've, you've thought of a different word. Third, yes, 13. Flower? Mm, not sure about flower. <laughs> Birthday, purple, good, great, very good. Okay, and going to another section in the same book, we have these two pictures. What sounds do you think they're practicing? Different, two different sounds and two um, and, and different word formations. Let me give you a clue. If I pinched you, you'd make one of the sounds. 
and if I pinched you and I was your best friend, you would probably make the other sound. Yes, ow! Very good, thank you, Rachel. Yeah, ow, good. And maybe, yes, oh, I'm your best friend and you pinched me. So here we see a focus on the O sound and the ow sound. And silly visuals can make learning fun as well and memorable. So it might be a nice idea for you to start looking out for fun photos that you can, fun photos or, or um, illustrations that you could use to do a little spotlight on, on, um, on phonics and have a little practice. You can, um, as you can see here, the sound when it's written down, it's written in a, a different color. And this is a nice way as well to encourage your stu students that for any sort of difficult um, spelling or sounds and uh, when the sound looks very different to how it's spelled on paper, to, to use color or to exact, you know, make the letters thicker, an example. Um, and it's important too that students get an opportunity to read the words in a sentence and, and not just uh, individually all the time. So here you could get students to read the sentences and say you have 30 seconds to read the sentences but when you read one sentence you stand up and when you read the other one you sit down. So students say a goat in a yellow coat and they stand up and a clown with a flower in his mouth and they sit down. And then you can do some follow-up practice. So for example you could draw um, at this table on the on the board and you can ask students to put the um, the words that they have under the clown into the right column and then you can ask questions and bring in other vocabulary from other units so for example just tell me do you live in a flat or a what words am i looking for yes house and where would you put that in the pink column or the yellow column and can you think of something in your house or in your bathroom with the ow sound yeah shower and which column would you put that into and if you looked out of your bathroom window and up at the sky, you would see some white things in the sky. What's the name for these? Clouds. Yes, thank you, Elizabeth and Maria. Yes, clouds. And then where would you put those? Uh, in, which, uh, in which column? So a simple table like this um, is a nice way for students to collect um, the sounds that they're practicing on. It helps them organise their learning and it provides a reference or an, or an aid for students to go back to. And little by little, students are becoming familiar with sound letter patterns and, and gaining a little bit of confidence maybe, and certainly a, a sense of achievement. If we take a look at this slightly end sound, we've got an ng here. Now ng mm, is a little bit difficult to uh, to say, so again, do a little bit of practice. Mm, mm, mm. Can you say that? Put your hands on your throat. Can you feel the ng mm at the end of your throat? Can you make that sound? And can you, when you make that sound, put one hand on your throat and say ng, mm, and use your writing hand to make the ng letters in the air. Mm, a bit challenging, okay? So you practice in front of the computer. Mm, and you're drawing ng in the air. Mm, good, making that sound and spelling memorable. And then you can add phonemes to the ng sound. So you can, if I say i, ng, ing, everybody, ing, o, ng, ong, a, ng, ang, ong, oh, o, uh, ng. Oh, sorry, I can't do it now. O, uh, ng, ong. Yeah. And then if you wanted to follow up, um, this listening and matching, for example, in the book, or if you wanted to create your own um, practice of, of this sound, you can see you can have sentences with the ng missing that students can write the, um, the endings to, and they can add their own pictures to them, and they can create their own sentences um, and, and their own pictures to their sentences. And then you can also brainstorm more words, and they can make fun sentences too. There's a lot of good words here for Halloween, wing, bang, tongue. Okay, now we're going to look at some examples from the new fun skills uh, books, um, more of which you'll hear later on in the, uh, at the end of the, of the webinar. 
and it's full of ideas as well that there's not, not a phonics page but um, there's good practice of um, sound, um, sounds and, and spelling correlations um, embedded in the different units so if we take a look at here here we can see in activity three we can see a practice of distinguishing between first letter sounds distinct discriminating between the two and often these are sounds as we've identified earlier that students have problems with t, d, p, b. there we are we've got the the g and the and the j and j is a is a, a particular difficulty for spanish speakers who would like to pronounce it as a h so here the students listen and tick the sounds they hear so nice kind of discriminating between those sounds and often um, first letter sounds will help us uh, will help students identify a whole word if they can hear the first set, uh, the first letter first and then you can see the follow up, up activity students write the first letter of these were uh, to these picture uh, these words underneath these pictures and then they can check their own um, check if they've got that right by looking back at exercise three and hopefully the, le the letter they identified as hearing there will be the first letter underneath the picture. In another page from the Fun Skills book we can see the raising of awareness of this schwa as some of you mentioned earlier which is, can also uh, be a bit of a difficulty and here We've got the uh sound represented mostly by ER, but we can also see zebra. And you can probably think of a job particular that doesn't end in ER or A or RA, but OR like doctor. And just by helping students notice these differences, uh, noticing uh, that that N sound um, is represented by ER, it may be something they've not really considered and it can help them um, ease uh, their spelling if they're familiar, if they become familiar and aware of it. So here's a nice activity where students have to listen and they circle the word that doesn't have the uh, end, uh, the uh ending. So here we've got desk, which is different from teacher and father. And of course, um, a song. If we use um, if we do use lexical sets, we, we may be lucky enough to find a, a particular sound that is used quite a lot in that particular in that set. So, for example, with clothes, we've got shirt, shoes and T-shirt. And we can ask students to sort of like write down more um, link to other words and write down more words they know um, with the sh sound. So, for example, sheep, fish, shell. Now, rhyming words. Rhyming words are very popular, aren't they, in stories and in songs, and they sensitise uh, they sensitise children and students to similar sounding words or word families. And rhyming words can and um, learning rhymes can help students predict spellings. Um, so, um, for example, if a song at the end of a line finishes with tall, the next line they'll hear small and Again, there'll be very similar patterns there. And it can also help students in their spelling because if they know how to write tall, they might be able to have a guess at writing small. And if they read, they know how to read hair, they might be able to read chair the first time they see it or vice versa. So to get students used to the idea uh, before meeting, uh, meeting uh, rhyming activities in their course book, which is not, e not particularly easy for second language learners, we could play a game something like this. Look at the word, look at the pairs. And I want you as you sit in front of your, your screen to point to the word that rhymes with the sound that I'm making. Me, 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 me rhymes with May, 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 rhymes with. My, 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 rhymes with. Mo, 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 rhymes with. Moo, 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 rhymes with. And then I can do that again, and this time you'd shout out the word. So, me, 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 rhymes with. 
three. No, 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 no. Rhymes with grey. So these activities, these similar activities can get students used to rhyming words. And activities like these prepare students for activities like this. Well, obviously songs that we've already mentioned, but here Neda, a character from the Fun Skills book, is talking about her favourite things. And she's talking about her favourite colour that rhymes with new, that's blue. Her favourite animal rhymes with frog, which would be dog. And her favourite toy rhymes with white kite. So we can we can see similar um, similar spelling patterns, but we can also see different spelling patterns, as in blue and new. Here, students uh, in activity three listen and circle the word that they hear. So C B, which has a different which has a difference at the beginning of the of the word of the two words. And boat and boots are different in the middle. And bat and bag is different at the end. So again, exposing students to these differences, making them aware. And then poems, as we said before, can help, um, can help um, students predict answers. They can help students manipulate words more so that they gain um, confidence. And then students could also, you could take the poem away and use the words here on the on the left to, so for students to write their own poem using the rhyming words as as a guide and and as a as a, a prompt. So just to summarise at this point, the idea of introducing a phonics approach. Um, so to introduce a phonics approach by doing these things, we can integrate a sound and spelling focus when we introduce new vocabulary or review vocabulary. So for example, think about the, the uh in word family members, uh, in family members or in, in jobs, teacher, farmer, um, and for example, in clothes, sh, the sh sound in clothes. Looking at the units and focusing on spelling and sound patterns that can be highlighted and given further practice. So looking across units, and we can see, for example, in the spellings of uh, the two spellings for er. Uh, um, we can re record and note down difficulties learners are having and provide a spotlight of attention and practice for those difficulties. So I mentioned before the j uh, for Spanish speakers, uh, represented by the, the, the j. So jeans, jump, juice, Jack, you might like to make a sentence with those words. Jack jumped and drank juice in his jeans. And we can develop our own systematic way of dealing with sounds and spelling words. And I think a nice thing to do is to actually, um, you can get these um, tables um, from, the, from the internet, but you can record, keep a record yourself of sounds and, and words that, that students have learnt. Um, for these different sort of like the different words that students have learned for these different sounds and and then you can use them you can go back to this collection and use them for your warmers and your activities and you can also create visuals with your students make posters on the wall you can give dictations of words for example train green kite and they have to write it in the in the correct column you can have just pictures to match to the words in the column so, um, so and you can also sorry, and you can also um, help students uh, encourage students to have dedicated pages in their in their in their notebooks um, to practice or to keep lists or tables with um, words that sound the same but maybe have different spellings. So finally. Um, I'd like to just go through my toolkit that I have, uh, my phonics toolkit for embedding phonics into our lessons um, and teaching and into students' learning. So, flashcards. Everybody uses flashcards, I think, don't you? Um, every, sorry, I've just realised I've used, uh, lost my box for questions and answers. Everybody uses flashcards. Um, we um, 
we do activities, for example, when we're teaching new words, run, um, sort of point to, run and touch, pick up, um, can do simple Simon Says, put on your shirt, simple Simon Says, put on your shoes. Um, while students are looking at the pictures. You can do palmanism. Do you know what palmanism is? Where they do matching activities, where they're just matching the first sound, like j, j, or sh, or h, with the word, with the new vocabulary. And then we can also do matching exercises with the whole word. So, for example, trousers, shirt, watch, and students have to match the word with the picture. We can, with a different set of pictures, um, we could focus on N sounds, where students match the N sound with the pictures that they see. So here, we'd have K, which here would match with sock. And of course, you can do rhyming words also matching. So glue with shoe, clock and sock. And we can make our own flashcards. So here, just take a look at uh, these flashcards for a moment and tell me what consonant blends or consonant clusters they might be practicing. And I'm sorry because if you type in anything, I can't I can't seem to see that right now. Questions. Yes, I can now. Sorry. Yes. Good. Fl. Oh, sorry. Yes. Fly. I lived in India for a few years. That's why we've got the cricket players on the grass in front of the trees. And what would you do with these with these um what would you do with these flashcards? Well, you could give student you could write um the consonant clusters on the board. So for example, cr, fl, sk, and students can pass along uh, pass along the flashcards and try to identify a word in the picture that might start with one of those letters, uh, with one of those combinations. You can write sentences for students to, to match, uh, to mingle and match with a picture. You can just get students to, to share the pictures and write their own sentences. A driver on a green tractor, a plane, between the clouds in the sky. So again, collect collect pictures so that you can um, do warmers like, like this and with other sounds. Post-its, post-its is in my toolkit. Post-its um, are very easy to use, easy to write on, easy to, to create um, for, for a class. Um, if, I, if I gave you this sound right now, where would you put it in the room that you're sitting in? Is there anywhere the sound, the k sound? Could you? Is there anything in the room that you're sitting in right now that you could put it on? Desk. Yes. Very good, Maria. Couch. Good. Good. Clock. Great. Keyboard. Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Clock. Kite, you've got a kite in front of you. Good. Kettle, someone's about to make tea. Colours, great. Clock, uh -huh. curtain, great. Very good, very good. So then you can ask students to write these words. You could make, um, you could make K the sound of your week, the, the K sound, the, the sound of your week, and have it, have the, the post-it on the corner of your board, and every class that you have, Point to the point to the to the post-it, elicit the words, and have one or two students come up and spell those words. You can do this with other sounds and other words, and you can also um, give post-its with a sound on, and make sure students are aware that it's the sound, and look around their classroom and start the class with a post-it being attached to an item in the classroom. And just staying on, you, here you've given me a lot of words from the home, obviously, because that's where you're sitting, maybe. Curtain, desk, kettle. And maybe I could use the opportunity to revise some house vocabulary, seeing as you're all sitting in your houses right now. 
So I could say, how many oohs are there in house? How do we make that ooh sound? What does that look like if we wrote it down? You just show me in the air and students draw two big circles in the air, uh, two big O's in the air to represent the ooh sound and practice it. Ooh, do those, um, use your voice at your mouth muscles again, ooh. So what words can we find with ooh in the house? And students hopefully would come up with bedroom, bathroom, living room. What about these two words? They've got two O's. Do we say ooh? No, we say floor and door, and it matches with, uh, and it rhymes with four. So you can bring in some rhyming with it, but also you're highlighting differences as well as, well as similarities between words. And you can also do with post-its, again, very easily write down some words, uh, rhyming words on the post-its, hand them out, and students have to mingle and find their partner. And when they found their partner, they maybe use the words to make a sentence. The bear has green hair. I like trains. I don't like planes. Also in my toolkit, very, very, for me, very important and something I use all the time here. It looks like a classroom uh, whiteboard, and I apologise. Um, these mini whiteboards, do any of you use mini whiteboards in your classroom? Can I just see, can you say yes or no? Yes, 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 yes. Aren't they brilliant? Oh, if you don't use them, it's really a good idea to invest in them. Um, they're very good for doing, well, I could ask you to share your ideas, but I'll just, because um, of time, I'll just run through. You can do on the spot spellings, of course. Um, you can do spellings of difficult words. So for example, beautiful, where students write it down and they hold it up and then they can look at each, other, at each other's boards and think, have I written it correctly? And they can self-correct if they haven't. And there's no shame in doing that if you haven't got it right. So kind of, so you're creating a nice sharing, uh, caring classroom. On the spot spellings, you could say, well, I'm going to read um, some words and I want you to listen to the L sound at the end of the words, L sound at the end of the words, which will have two L's at the end of the words. So listen and write down only the words with that L sound. Ready? Ball, robot, car, doll, bedroom, hall. And students write down, they listen and they only write down the words with the double L at the end. So a nice way to look at the, uh, the pattern, the, 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 highlight that pattern of double L at the end of, of certain words, or good spelling practice. And you can also do, um, only write down double letter words um, in, these, in these verbs. So for example, flying, running, walking, jumping, swimming, hitting. Students only have, Obviously, I'm going quite fast, but go slowly, and students just write down the words uh, with the double letter. Um, you can have races with the whiteboards, which is uh, good fun. So groups racing each, each other to to spell a word. Pass it on. You can write. I want. I want you to, uh, to write down this word. Fish. Pass it on. The next group have to write another word with the sh sound in. So shirt, for example and so on. And there are other ways that you can exploit that. Sound out and try out is, is very nice when students are doing some independent writing or completing gaps in, a, in an activity in the course book. Um, they can have a go at writing a word on the board first before they write it in their neat, uh, in their course book or in their, in their notebook neatly. Um, and that's quite nice because sometimes students might recognise that they've made, might be able to self-correct and recognise the, the mistake they've made. So if they write when without the H, they might suddenly see W-E-N and realise, ah, oh, I forgot the H. That's nice, and it stops a lot of scribbling out in their own, in their, in their notebooks. And then to practise difficult spellings, like the, the that vowel combination in beautiful, for example, you could write it on the board, students have a couple of seconds to look at it, you rub it off and then write it down and then, sh and, and then they can show and compare and then you can have a volunteer write the word on the, on the board for the rest of the class to, to compare to. And going back to the, the magic E, so the students could copy down these, these uh, beginnings of words, big kit plan, and then you can ask them to put the magic E on and read the word and see the magic of the change. So BIC becomes bike, kit becomes kite, plan becomes plane. 
Okay, and finally, um, just a, a couple of minutes, just to take a look at, uh, to run through these very, very quickly, some other ideas in the toolkit. Um, use, the, use the spellings that you focused on to make rhymes and tongue twisters. So again, you're reinforcing that sound spelling. So the goat in the coat wants to float in a boat. Uh, how much chocolate did the chicken eat for lunch? And they're fun ways to begin a class and then you can get students to try to write the sentence. And again, it's just a little bit of, of, of focus on that, of that sound spelling correlation. You can have fun with alliteration. Again, practicing those first letter sounds. P -p 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 -p. Uh, Peter the pirate put a piano in his pocket. What else did Peter put in his piano? Can you type very quickly? He put a piano. He put maybe some pancakes because he was hungry. What else? Paper clips. He could put lots of paper clips in his pocket. Pizza the pirate put a pizza in his pocket. Ooh, put peanuts in his pocket. Great. And then you can use alliteration to create, be more creative also with maybe creating a poem. So where are the waves in the windy weather? Where can we walk in the windy weather? What can we wear in the windy weather? What can we watch in the windy weather? So practicing the w sound, which is also very difficult for, for certain nationalities to say. And students can, can write a poem with the answers. I walk on the beach in the windy weather. I, uh, so, uh, sorry, where are the waves? So I see the, the waves um, at, at sea in the windy weather. I can walk on the beach in windy weather. Do I wear my boots in windy weather? We can watch kites in windy weather. You can also go, if we just go over to the to the right side of the board, we can also go back to if we've had a, um, if we've collected words like that table I showed you where you, could, you can collect the sounds that students have been working on. You can go back to that and create fun sentences for students to practice reading. And it is good if you can um, listen to individuals reading. Uh, students can practice reading to each other or, or while they're doing another activity like, for example, making their own rhyme, you could go around um, and listen to students reading. But also try to collect, um, collect spellings um, or collect sounds that are difficult and put them into small uh, into fun sentences or to small in small text. So here you've got you can see the T at the end of the word. I can't see this because it's actually blocked um, for me at the moment. But you can see that the the consonant Y at the end of words, um, which has that E sound. So a nice way to read that and practice and reinforce that sound. Um, so I'm just going to going to have to come out just for oops. Um, oh no, I can't. Oops. Okay. Um, new mo I think new mnemonics is under the the, um, the control panel that I have on my screen at the moment. So new mnemonics, just making charts, making um, um, putting up, um, for example, your post-its with a particular sound you want to practice. Um, putting um, pictures up with um, maybe a, a list of, of sounds that rhyme with that picture, and um, to help students remember spellings and to find also and um, for example, uh, other ways to remember spelling. So for example, with the WH word, words, question words, you know, what is in fact a what and a hat, and that might um, allow some students to remember that spelling. Um, we can draw, we can draw letters in the air like we did with the ng, and we can draw on our part, the partner's back, those oohs, for example. Um, you can do picture dictation, some bread on your head, a plane in the rain, and have fun with that. A parrot eating carrots again, looking at those double letter uh, letters that we don't hear that when we say and when we uh, when we speak. And again, you can help uh, by doing some syllable clapping, especially with this old sound, which adds an extra syllable onto words. So instead of apple, it's apple. And if you clap it, you can also internalize um, the sound of it and maybe the spelling of it too. So apple, noodle, table, etc. Okay, and then finally, I'm sorry I'm rushing through this, but there are lots of manipulatives that you can use, uh, word tiles, plasticine, uh, to, to make letters, to make, um, to form words, uh, these lollipop sticks. Um, there's a lot of material, um, lots of phonic material out there uh, that you can purchase as well, or you can make your own board games. Again, make sure that students have covered these sounds and then um, they can play. Um, Here's an example of the k sound uh, that we looked at. And so you can make a poster for the wall or they can do it in their, 
in their notebooks to refer back to. And yeah, consonant clusters, um, again, the students can refer to if you've got it on, um, on your classroom wall or and they can do in their notebooks. Okay, so just to summarize then, shine a spotlight on ph phonics IA sound, in your classes, you know, sound spelling correlations. Identify and highlight patterns when you can, beginning of, of your class especially. Develop strategies so that learners are able to sound words out when they're reading, are able to predict spellings when they're writing, and become confident readers and writers. And remember the motto? What's the motto? Can you type it in now? Not well, stay healthy definitely for, for these days. Uh, little and often, yes. So you don't, it shouldn't take a whole class to do these things, but they're little spotlights that you can attach to maybe doing other things. And like we saw with the with the clothes, if you've got sh words in the clothes, you can bring in um, other sh words too. So looking for opportunities to help students and give them the tools to become better readers and writers. Thank you very much. And I think I've gone over time a little bit, but um, thank you for listening. And I hope you found the activities in this session helpful. Thank you so much, Monsi. That was a really interesting session and um, I can see that the um, attendees have all found that really useful, um, had some brilliant comments all the way through. Um, so to everyone who's attended, as we mentioned earlier, we will send you your attendance certificate by email next week and the recording of this webinar. Now, we don't have too much time left, but if anyone has any questions for Monsi, um, please do um, start typing those in the questions box and in the meantime I am just going to um, tell you a small a quick um, give you a couple of quick slides about the book fun skills um, as I mentioned at the beginning um, Monsi is the author of this new course fun skills um, it's a six level course um, there are two books per level, one for pre-A1 starters, A1 movers and A2 flyers. Um, it's a short course, 45 hours per level, and it's designed to be used alongside um, a general English course for primary learners. Um, it presents um, skill-based tasks and practice, helping students communicate confidently through listening, speaking, reading and writing. And all of the characters that you can see here on the covers um, were designed by real students so it's very inclusive um, and it really helps to bring the learning to life all of the characters have got special roles in the books and um, they really make put the fun into fun skills in addition to the students books we've also got mini trainers which contain two practice tests um, and we have got um, home booklets which the um, students can take home with them and it helps bridge the gap between home and school um, and it's basically um, adds more fun activities for them. Right, the other thing I wanted to tell you about quickly, just trying to move the slide on, if I can. I'm not sure I'm able to, Monty, could you possibly move the slide on? Okay, yeah, brilliant, sorry. thank you. <laughs> World of fun, one back. That's it, sorry, sorry. That's, That's it. the go. one. Um, do <laughs> visit our website, World of Fun, especially at the moment if you're looking for resources um, to give to students. If you're teaching them remotely and they're at home, there are lots of resources on here. We've got teaching tips, videos, articles, story videos, webinar recordings, creative drama activities, writing booklets, new finger puppets, some digital posters, um, and also more details about our um, materials for young learners. Okay. Let's just hand back over to Monsi. Let's have a quick look if we have any questions. Um, Is there any there that you want to pick up on? Um, let's see, let's, let's see. We've been getting actually quite a few as we've gone through the webinar. Um, how can we, oops, how can we start? Uh, how can we start teaching phonics to Spanish preschoolers? Um, so, are you? I'm not sure if you're 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 working in a bilingual school. Um, 
there are programs that you can, um, I don't know the name of any, pro well, there's the, the very popular jo um, Jolly Phonics program um, that you could look into and that systematically works through sounds starting with um, three, four year olds that you could take a look at. Um, maybe you could Google that. Um, sorry, and, and Irma. Um, how can we? Okay, we've got a few questions we... here. Sorry, Monty, you sorry, carry on. Not... No, no, I was just going to say, um, um, so a question from Fahima, how can we um, teach, recognise the different sound of, of the k sound? So, for example, we did that activity, didn't we, where you, you, you place the, the poster on uh, different things with the, the k sound. And right at the end of my, um, on that last page, there was a little chart that showed the different words that have the, the k sound, like, for example, the in Queen that, that we we put you in. So I think um, just collecting words with the cuss sound that have different letter representations. Um, sorry, Jenny, would you like to answer a question while I look through as well? Uh, um, I've just spotted a question that actually came up earlier. Is there a recommended number of sounds to introduce per lesson? Um, that's quite an interesting uh, one because obviously well, yeah. um, phonics programs will have um, and again I'm not an expert on on the phonics programs although I have worked on some of them but um, yes there is a set number of, of sounds that stu students work through um, in a week but I couldn't tell you right now how many um, here what I'm suggesting in the in in my webinar is that we um, we look at we look at the sounds that that come up and yes we would maybe do a little spotlight once or twice a week or you might have um, a sound like I say the sound of a week that you might just keep referring to and giving a little bit of practice um, as a warmer uh, in your classes or at the end of the class if you've got five minutes. Um, I'd recommend that you look at um, uh, maybe look at some uh, Google uh, phonics teaching on the on, um, on the internet and, and and look at the programs that are there and especially the, the Jolly Phonics and you'll find information, uh, more information about using, you know, phonics programs. Okay, thank you so much, Monsi. We seem to be running out of time now. Um, and thank you all for attending. As we said, we'll be in touch next week with your certificates and webinar recordings. Um, it's been a really great interactive session and lovely to see so many of you from around the world. So stay safe, everyone. Take care. Challenging times we're in at the moment, but we hope to see you all again um, very soon. OK, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much.